analysts expect, and the bottom is going to be lower than analysts expect. It could go down, easily go down 30%. Well, we can come back to that. But okay, so the inflation sort of came on the scene in mid 2021. You know, the Renowned economist Jim Rickards has a dire warning. A devastating economic crisis looms. Will our financial system crumble or can we prepare for a brighter future? Let's find out. Let's talk about the four scenarios Jim Rickards presents regarding the future of international reserve currencies. He brings to light the possibility of having multiple currencies, a gold-based system, special drawing rights, or even a collapse leading to a dire situation. Starting with the concept of SDRs, Rickards reveals a fascinating plan by the International Monetary Fund. This scheme is all about creating global money, which is called SDRs, and it can be freely minted by the IMF. The goal here is to refill the world economy's tank with its freshly printed money. Rickards points out that the IMF has a 10-year strategy to establish SDR as the international reserve currency, and it's something you can read about on their website. The scenario of the US dollar losing dominance also grabs Rickard's attention. Just a few years ago in 2007, the dollar accounted for 70% of international reserves. Now, this number has dwindled to 60% and continues to drop. If the dollar share goes below 50%, Rickard suggests that the euro and currencies like the Australian and Canadian dollars might fill the gap. However, he warns that having multiple dominant currencies could be a recipe for chaos, potentially igniting currency wars. Rickards also sheds light on the significant shift in 2009 when the US Treasury got permission to contribute $100 billion to the IMF. The move points to a gradual change where SDR is being integrated into the global financial landscape. Regarding loans and credit lines, Rickards presents some interesting facts. He notes that the IMF used most of its resources, 91% to be precise, to rescue Europe and Mexico, leaving only 9% for the rest of the world. This unequal distribution contradicts the idea that these funds were meant primarily for developing nations, suggesting some dishonesty by the US government. Rickards also delves into the possibility of a gold standard. To understand this, he insists on clarifying what we mean by money. One must choose between technical terms like M0, M1, and M2. He also discusses the right reserve ratio, should an equal amount of gold back each paper dollar. He points to historical examples, 19th century England and the 20th century United States, where gold standards were successfully maintained within 20 and 40% backing respectively, suggesting that a one-to-one -one ratio might not be necessary. Finally, Rickards warns of a possible collapse of the confidence in the US dollar, which would trigger a crisis in the entire international monetary system. This is not a doomsday prophecy, as we've already witnessed three such collapses in the 20th century. Such a scenario wouldn't lead us back to a primitive era, but it would necessitate renegotiation among the major financial powers to redefine the rules of the game. In such times of impending economic crisis, Rickards urges us to think ahead and prepare for these possible futures. If we talk about a world that uses gold to back up its currency, we should consider what Jim Rickards says. For one, he points out the United States couldn't adopt this system solo. He warns that it would make other world currencies less appealing, which would cause a severe drop in general price levels or deflation. It's like returning to 1925 when Winston Churchill made a similar mistake. Rickards also underlines the importance of who has the most gold. The European monetary system countries hold about 10,000 tons of the shiny stuff. The US comes in second with around 8,000 tons, and the IMF has around 3,000 tons. Then there's China. No one knows for sure how much gold they have, but Rickards thinks their claim of 1,000 tons might actually be four times that, which could give them a strong hand in any talks about a new global monetary system. So, if we were to back every dollar, euro, or yen with gold, how much would gold be worth? Rickards calculates that we would need to see the price of gold hit around $7,000 an ounce to support the amount of money in the world without causing a drop in general price levels. This calculation assumes that we'd only need gold to back up 40% of all the money. Finally, Rickards explores a scenario that he believes is most likely to happen, an economic meltdown. He thinks that we're likely heading for a big fall because of the wrong policies, delays, and lack of understanding about risk. Once that happens, he expects governments to take emergency action, which might eventually lead to a form of heavy-handed rule after some public disorder. Rickards also talks about the tug of war going on between two big economic forces, inflation and deflation. He sees deflation or falling prices as something that naturally happens during tough times, when people sell assets to pay debts. 
As prices fall, people must sell more to pay off their debts, creating a cycle until prices hit rock bottom. But simultaneously, he sees inflation or rising prices happening because of government policies. In his view, these two forces could cancel each other out, creating a sort of economic standoff. Jim Rickards offers us a glimpse of the future of international reserve currencies. He outlines four possible situations that may unfold, including a world with multiple dominant currencies, a return to the gold standard, a world with special drawing rights, or total economic meltdown. Let's start with the concept of multiple reserve currencies. The dollar's grip on the world economy has been weakening, and Rickards foresees a future where not just one, but several currencies have significant influence. However, this could be like walking a tightrope, as it might spark currency wars due to the absence of a single strong currency like gold or the dollar to keep everything balanced. An interesting twist in the story is the rise of SDRs, a form of global money that can be created by the International Monetary Fund whenever they please. The IMF could provide a cash infusion to the global economy by increasing the supply of SDRs. Rickards brings up an example that may raise some eyebrows if more people knew about it. The US Treasury gave a hefty amount of money to the IMF, which was primarily used to bail out Europe. Next on the list is the possibility of going back to the gold standard. This would involve tying paper money to gold, but the idea raises a few questions. How do we define money? How much gold should we have to back up the paper money? Which countries are going to be a part of this system? Rickards warns that if the US decided to go back to the gold standard alone, it could make other currencies undesirable, potentially causing a big drop in prices or deflation. Lastly, Rickards paints a bleak picture of an economic collapse, which he considers the most likely scenario. He believes this might happen due to a mixture of denial, procrastination, misunderstanding of risks, and misguided policies. If such a crisis did occur, the reaction could involve heavy-handed government action, and might even lead to the form of authoritarian rule after social unrest. Rickards also gives an interesting explanation about how money works. He talks about the quantity theory of money, which says that the amount of money and how quickly it is spent equals the price level and the amount of goods and services. But here's the catch. If people aren't spending money, even a huge amount of money wouldn't do much for the economy. In Rickards' words, even if you multiply $3 trillion by zero, if no one is spending, you still end up with zero. Let's break down what economist Jim Rickards is saying. Our economy is stuck in a tug of war. One side, we've got falling prices or deflation, which naturally happens when the economy is down and people are paying off their debts. On the other side, we have rising prices or inflation, which is created intentionally by government policies. These two forces are cancelling each other out, but this situation is volatile and could quickly tilt in either direction. Then there's the speed of money, which is like a game of hot potato. The quicker the money changes hands, the healthier the economy. But the economy can slow down if people start holding on to their money. Despite efforts by policymakers to get the game going again, Rickards isn't very hopeful about their chances. In a nutshell, Rickards is trying to make sense of the confusing world of global money and warns us about the effects of inflation, deflation, and the money speed on our economy. Now that we've explored the potential scenarios presented by Rickards, what do you think lies ahead for our economy? Will it be collapse, multiple currencies, SDRs, or a return to gold? Share your thoughts in the comments below.